All right, guys, so the first thing we're making is this delicious chocolate hazelnut granola. I'm starting off by adding in some coconut oil to a bowl, and to that I'm adding in some cacao powder, which is rich in antioxidants and magnesium. I'm also gonna be adding in some protein powder. This is optional. If you don't wanna add in protein powder, simply add in another extra tablespoon of cacao powder. Then I am using this almond hazelnut butter, which honestly tastes like Ferrero Rocher. It is so good. A little bit of maple syrup for sweetness. And then we are going to stir together all of these ingredients. And this is what's gonna make the coating to our nuts so that we can coat it in this rich chocolatey hazelnut batter and all of the nuts are gonna taste delicious in it. So stir that up until it's nice and smooth. And then we are going to add in our nuts. So I'm adding in hazelnuts, some dairy-free, sugar-free chocolate chips, and some sliced almonds. You can change up these nuts to whatever you want. However, because we are making a hazelnut granola with the hazelnut butter, I would highly recommend adding in some hazelnuts. But you can also add walnuts, pecans, sunflower seeds, whatever you like. So go ahead and line a baking sheet with some parchment paper, and then I am spreading out our delicious granola into a nice, even layer. Once it is nice and baked off, allow it to cool for 15 minutes before breaking it up into pieces. And then you have these wonderful chocolate clusters. I store mine in a stash bag for the week and then I like to build these yogurt bowls. So I'm using the Le Grand Coconut Yogurt. I like getting just the natural one. Adding in some of the chocolate hazelnut granola. And then I'm at slicing some banana to put on top. The combination of like the banana with the chocolate hazelnut granola feels like you're eating Nutella for breakfast. It is so good. So slicing that on the top and there you go. You have a perfect yogurt bowl. Prep the granola in advance and you can eat this all week long. Next up, we are making some zucchini fritters. These are so delicious and great to meal prep. So I'm starting off by grating up two medium-sized zucchini. So just use the large grater on the side of yours and grate them all up. I love zucchini because it's rich in vitamins, minerals, and it's a great way to add veggies to the start of your day. Once you have grated your two zucchini, I'm just putting that on a paper towel to squeeze out the water. You can also use a nut milk bag. This is very important to do. You need to squeeze out all of the excess water from the zucchini so that our fritters don't get soggy and they're able to get nice and crispy. So just keep squeezing until you have squeezed out all of the water from our grated zucchini. And then once that's done, go ahead and add that back to your bowl after you've dumped out the water. And I am going to add in two eggs. I haven't tried this recipe with a flax egg, but if you do and it works, definitely let me know so that I can share with others. So I'm adding in two eggs here, as well as a quarter cup of some dairy-free cheese. You can use your favorite kind. This one is based from cashews, and it's from the brand Fromagerie, because I know I'm gonna get questions about it. I love it. And then I'm gonna be adding in some almond flour, as well as some garlic salt for flavor. And then all we have to do is add in some paprika, and then stir this up. You can definitely change up these spices depending on what you like, but I really like the garlic salt and the smoked paprika. So just stir that together until all the spices and the cheese and the zucchini and the almond flour all combined so that we can start cooking them. Then I took a pan on medium heat with some avocado oil in it and I'm using a one quarter cup scoop to scoop out our fritters. I'm cooking them a couple at a time but depending on how big your pan is you can definitely cook more at a time. So just gently press those down and I'm cooking them until they are golden brown on one side which is about three to four minutes and then you can go ahead and flip them over. You can also bake these however I feel like they get a lot crispier if you cook them in the pan. You can have them as is or if you want to add another egg on top for breakfast but I like having them just like this they are so tasty and delicious and full of so much flavor and then we are making one of my faves which is eggs in a basket so I'm taking a couple slices of my favorite paleo bread and I'm going to be cutting a hole in the middle which is going to make our basket I have been having this since I was little and it's always been one of my favorite things and with Easter recently and spring coming along I was reminded to make it again so just cut a slice into your bread and punch out the hole and that's where our egg is going to go 
go ahead and heat up a pan again to medium heat. I'm adding in some ghee, which not only helps to add the golden brown to the bread, but it also adds some flavor. So once that is melted down, go ahead and add your two slices to the pan first so they can start to get nice and golden. And then I am going to also crack an egg in the center of both of them. So I like using pasture raised free range eggs. They have a lot more omega threes and not only do they have protein, but eggs are also rich in choline, which is good for your brain. And they are in a complete protein. So like I said, really good for breakfast because it's a complete protein and it gives you that brain fuel for your brain. So cracking that in the middle and then after about two, three minutes when it's golden brown, you can go ahead and flip them over. You can either cook them till they're soft for another 30 seconds or if you want them cooked medium, cook it a bit longer depending on what you like. But this is a really quick, easy breakfast and it is so fun for the springtime.